Hi, my name is Ken and you're watching Mastering UX. In this episode, I'd like to cover why data presentation needs to have a user-centered approach. I'm also going to provide you with four practical breakdowns on how you can present data. And I'd like to also just offer up some universal principles and tips along the way. So stay tuned as we cover this topic that I believe is going to grow more and more important as data grows and data science begins to develop as a field. The key to effective data presentation is not complexity or simplicity, it's user centricity. Who is your audience? What do they need? Uh, what are they comfortable with? The answers to these questions should guide our design of data. You know, I had this huge aha moment and it was years ago, I did some user interviews for an upgraded CRM system, which was a massive effort and it involved custom development to feature new data charts and graphs. Well, this was the most invested portion of the project and the sponsors of the CRM were quite proud of the visualizations. So they put them at the top of the most important pages. Well, I went ahead and I did some interviews and found, uh, did these interviews with 10 or so um, sales and technical support folks. And it was clear that the charts provided little value for non-director level staff, which was really about 90% of the users. So, you know, there were some comments that really stood out and they said things like, I could see how a director would like to see this, but this doesn't help me. I know XYZ numbers are big, but I need to know what's changed. I need to know if I should pick up the phone. And then I heard something like the data needs to be actionable for my day to day, or it's not useful for me. What I realized from these interviews is that people working with the customers, they need to see what's spiked down, what's been a drastic change in call volume. They need to see if the data is telling them and if they need to call the customer or if they need to investigate about a matter, maybe it's a certain problem. Um, I also learned that this kind of attractive design combined with powerful features can really mean nothing if you don't understand what's meaningful to the user. And once again, this validated to me how important user testing is. So let's take a look at a practical breakdown of how to present data. The first is numbers and tables. Then there's bar charts and line graphs. Then there's more sophisticated patterns and charts. Then there's sort of the highest echelon, and that is the unique storytellers. So let's move on to this matter of numbers and tables. Um, a table, we know it's extremely simple. It's been around for centuries, and it's still one of the most effective ways to present data. The reason is, is that they're versatile, straightforward, precise, and they're easily to understand. Tables are excellent for quick comparisons, detailed information, and it really matters when the information needs to be precise and you really need to have an exact number. The pros of num numbers and tables are that they're accurate and precise. They can be easy to understand and interpret, and they don't really require a lot of cognitive load. So they can be used to present a wide range of data. Um, to give you an example, like using for stats of a sports team as a good example, you might see a table and it's got wins and losses. And these are binary. These are kind of a different way of looking at things as, as opposed to rebounds and turnovers and three-pointer percentages uh, for and comparing this with 30 teams all in one shot. The cons are that this can look kind of boring, it can look monotonous, um, it can be difficult to compare and see trends. Uh, going back again to this analogy, you know, it's hard to look across the table columns and to see how rebounds are contributing to wins or field goal percentages. So a couple tips I'd like to offer is don't be afraid to highlight or bold what's important. You can also add visual elements to your tables like colors, logos as you see here, or icons. I would say try to reduce thick borders, especially those that are on the vertical columns. It can be difficult for the eye to focus on the data if the borders are thick and have a lot of contrast. In general, it's better to use horizontal borders or zebra stripes than a lot of column separators. Um, the next one I'd like to cover is bar charts and line graphs. Besides tables, bar charts and line graphs will likely be used more than any other data visualization. 
Bar charts and line graphs are a common way and easy to understand way to visualize data, and they're well suited for showing trends, relationships, and sort of the pace of change over time. Going back to my aha moment, again, I realized that the staff didn't care about XYZ company making $4.5 million last month, but what they really cared for is that there was a substantially less than normal decline in their sales. Or they also might want to know that there's something that's trending in a very notable pace. For this, you need to kind of have things like bar charts and line graphs. Um, so some of the pros of bar charts and line graphs is that they're visually appealing. They can be familiar. They're easy to understand still. They can be used to show trends and changes over time. They can compare data between different groups. But one of the cons are is that they can be misleading if they're not used correctly. So as a tip, I would say, instead of having legends, try to add the label in line if it's possible. Don't be afraid to call out what's important. Add indicators or important thresholds or call out key metrics to the graph or the line. Again, it's all about storytelling and emphasizing what the user wants to see. Sophisticated patterns. Technically, there's no reason to call out separately bar ch charts and line graphs from sophisticated charts and patterns, but I do want to emphasize that most patterns should be reserved for audiences that are familiar with and want to digest more complex data presentations. There are times when you, want, when you need to create more sophisticated data visualizations, including bubble charts, box plots, uh, scatter plots, pie charts, spider charts, and many more. You know, sophisticated patterns can make data visualizations more visually appealing and engaging. They are used to create more complex visualizations that show correlations, complex relationships, and multi-dimensional data. So going back to the basketball analogy with a fan that might appreciate a simple table or a bar chart, now an NBA coach that is really needing to make some important decisions about players' minutes, matchups, and there's a lot that's riding uh, on the stakes. Um, well, um, this is where they might appreciate a sophisticated chart like this. Because they're making such massive decisions, they're willing to focus on and analyze the data like, like this. So the pros of sophisticated patterns can be visually appealing and they can be engaging. They can also show more information, more dimensions, and they can really convey relational information. Uh, they can be used to create more complex visualizations. Some of the cons are is that sophisticated patterns can be difficult to understand and interpret, even if well designed. The cognitive load can be quite high, and they may be confusing to those that are not uh, statistically savvy. So a couple of tips that I'd like to offer is, you know, you really should think again, why am I using this and why do I need to use this? All of the same tips, especially the matter of calling out what's important from the bar charts and line charts, they apply to these more sophisticated patterns. And the next one I'd like to say is, is consider breaking uh, things up into multiple charts if it's too busy or dense. Uh, you can also use interactivity, dynamic visuals to educate an audience about how to read a chart through the tooltips or have features like animations, zooming, and filters. Unique storytellers. Unique storytellers are data visualizations that tell a story, and you can often find them in editorial pieces. Uh, there are people who specialize in this kind of marriage of the art and the science of crafting beautiful, engaging, impactful stories through statistics, graphic design, and sometimes even technical coding. Unique storytellers often add a unique element such as graphic design, immersive layouts, interactivity, modified chart patterns. So the pros of using these kind of unique storytellers is that they can be very memorable, impactful. They can help tell a story about the data. They can be used to engage and inform audiences. There are cons, though. They can be very difficult to create and to maintain. On the one hand, they can help break down difficult concepts and they also can have the potential of being very difficult to understand and interpret. Um, as a tip, I'd say don't let your art compete with the clear communication. So to wrap it up, the best way to present data will vary depending on your specific data and your audience. 
In conclusion, the art and the science of data presentation are not about how complex or how simple you can make your, make your data. It's about how well you can tailor it to the needs and the preferences of your user. As we continue to generate more and more data, um, this user-centered approach will be more and more key to turning that data into actionable and understandable insights. So thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe for more insightful content like this. Um, if you have any thoughts or questions about user experience, drop them in the comments below. See you next time.